When Star vs. the Forces of Evil was first released back in 2015, it was presented as a show which showed off the adventures of a magical princess from another dimension and her best friend Marco. To this day, that description can still be used to describe the show. But the truth is, a lot has changed since the end of Season 1. Let's take a look at how Star vs. has changed between the two seasons. According to LiteraryDevices.net, Tone is an attitude of a writer towards a subject or audience. The tone in the first season of Star vs. was much brighter than Season 2's tone was, even when the main villain, Toffee, was introduced. With the exception of Storm the Castle, there weren't many events which have a dramatic change to the storyline. Most of Star's actions have no consequences. She causes a lot of trouble, but she doesn't have to fix her mistakes. This is, however, quite different than Season 2. In Season 2, the tone is much darker. After the events of Storm the Castle, Star's wand is damaged by Toffee demanding her to destroy it in order for her to save Marco, and can't do magic as flawlessly as it could before. Later in the season, when Star loses the spellbook, she's put in a situation where she has no guidance during a time when her wand is broken. She's simply put in much harder situations than she was in Season 1. Season 2 also had more time simply to develop. Season 2 has 22 episodes, 9 more than Season 1. This gave the team behind the show more time to set up the history of the Mumins and Star's family. There was some of this in Season 1, just not as much as Season 2. There's more story-based episodes in Season 2. There's a greater feeling of progression present. Both seasons have what you might consider to be filler episodes, but I feel that Season 1 has better fillers. The comedy in the earlier episodes is way funnier than it is in the second season, but Season 2 admittedly has its moments too. Episodes like Trickstar are more common in Season 2, and nobody enjoyed that episode. Some other bad filler episodes include Spider with a Top Hat, The Bounce Lounge, and Starstruck. None of these episodes add anything to the plot of the show, and some of them are straight up boring. Season 1's filler was much more energetic and enjoyable, especially since there wasn't much of a story going on at the same time. Star's main enemy, Ludo, is extremely weak and pathetic in Season 1. There's not really a threat during that season until Toffee appears and changes everything. Episodes in Season 1 usually played out with Ludo trying to get Star's wand and failing horribly every time. In Season 2, after Star is forced to break her wand, Ludo has the second half of it, a bird and a spider companion, a whole new unshaven look, and he ends up getting possessed by Toffee during the last few episodes of Season 2, which means there's actually a threat in the show. Ludo starts off weak, but when he's given a wand, he learns how to use it. He becomes a powerful threat for Star, especially after being possessed by Toffee, an intelligent, calculating monster. To summarize all of this, Star doesn't have a powerful enemy in Season 1, but in Season 2, she has an extremely powerful enemy. Even as the villains became harder to fight, Star and Marco had a lot more inner demons to face. In Season 2, Star was not the happy, perky girl we knew. She got built in character. She became darker, prone to anger and jealousy, even to the point of using dark magic. She has a whole closet full of secrets and never wants to face her problems. She avoids her problems so much they become problems for other people. A good example of that is in Face the Music with Marco and Ruberia. And while characters like Star got much more developed, some characters, who were more vain in Season 1, became background characters. Alfonso and Ferguson are excellent examples of this. They were main characters in Season 1, but were demoted to background characters in Season 2. Brittany Wong is another noticeable character who shows up far less in Season 2. You may have noticed that the show kind of looks different between the seasons. There's actually a reason for this. When Season 2 was picked up, a decision was made to switch from the original animation studio, Mercury Filmworks in Ottawa, Canada, to two South Korean studios. That's why the second season doesn't have as much energetic movement as Season 1. It's obvious that Season 1 looks better, but Season 2 still looks fine. Finally, Season 1 has way less shipping potential in it. It's true that Blood Moon Ball can be considered a very important shipping episode, but the truth is, Season 2 has way more. Jackie and Marco actually go out, Star reveals her crush on Marco, and Glosseric begins a loving relationship with Pudding. I'll never let go. Which season did you like better? Tell us in the comments below. Be sure to like the video and share it with your Star vs. fan friends. Thanks for watching!